In microfluidics, high surface roughness hinders the flow of fluids in microchannels, leading to low accuracy and poor quality products. Despite several attempts to reduce surface roughness, the problem remains alive, well, and kicking. Why is it persisting? How best shall we deal with the problem? Shall we ever find a permanent solution? If yes, then when and how? My name is Job Lazar Sokelo. I am pursuing Mass of Science in Industrial Engineering and Systems Management at Egypt Japan University of Science and Technology. Our work is a novel attempt to solve the problem of high surface roughness in microfluidics once and for all. We model surface roughness in CO2 laser ablation of aluminum coated polymethyl methacrylate using adaptive neurofuzzy inference system. How unique is the work? Did we really solve the problem of high surface roughness once and for all? Follow me closely. According to the International Market Analysis Research and Consulting, the global microfluidics market size reached about 20.9 billion US dollars in 2021 and is projected to reach 52.4 billion US dollars by 2027, compelled by the ever growing demand for microfluidic products. Microfluidics is among the fastest growing and most promising technological trends today. It has greatly boosted miniaturization in various industries like medical, chemical, and electronics, among others. Micromachining is widely used to fabricate microparts like microchannels, which are widely used in several applications like chromatography, electrophoresis, and DNA analysis. Why are microfluidic devices highly demanded in the world market? Many reasons. The devices require small amounts of reagents and samples. They also reduce reagent cost. They also have short analysis time. They also have low fabrication costs and many other advantages. Initially, silicon, quartz, and glass were used as the foremost materials for the fabrication of microfluidic devices because of the existing micromachining technologies and the promising properties, such as properly defined surface characteristics, high melting point, optical transparency, and high mechanical strength, among others. However, Manufacturing microfluidic devices using silicon, quartz, and glass is costly and consumes a lot of time, since costly methods are used like wet chemical etching and photolithography. Additionally, clean room facilities are required. What then is the solution? Currently, polymers are being heavily used to fabricate microfluidic devices. Why? Many reasons. Polymers have favorable chemical and physical properties. They also have lower cost of fabrication. They are also biocompatible. They are also cheap. They have good optical transparency. They are also disposable. Furthermore, compared to silicon, quartz, and glass, polymers are micromachined using cheap methods that do not need frequent access to a clean room. Polymethyl methacrylate has a high absorptivity of about 95% in the infrared region. As a result, it is suitable to be micromachined using CO2 lasers. Fabrication of microfluidic devices on PMFA using CO2 lasers is simple, cheap, and flexible. Accordingly, PMMA is being heavily fabricated using CO2 lasers. Since CO2 laser fabrication of microchannels on PMMA is a photothermal process, a high thermal gradient appears in the ablation zone. This causes several thermal defects, such as melting of the PMMA substrates, high surface roughness, bulges, splashes, clogging of the microchannels, inclined surface walls, resolidification in the ablation zone, and formation of heat-affected zone. The defects result in leakages and affect the quality and bonding of the fabricated products. Therefore, it is challenging to achieve precise dimensional control when fabricating microchannels on PMMMA using CO2 lasers. What are the solutions? The solutions are to coat PMMA substrates before fabrication and control the values of the inputs to achieve the desired values of the outputs. Here is a study done by Mohammed and others. They fabricated the microchannels at 3.6 watts and 5 millimeters per second. In this figure, they coated the PMB substrate with 300 micrometer layer of water before fabrication. But in this one, they fabricated without coating the PMB substrate. As you can see, when the PMB substrate was coated, the microchannel fabricated was straight. But when it was not coated, the microchannel was heavily affected by the defects. In laser micromachining, 
Efficiency, quality, and accuracy are strongly determined by the inputs like power, speed, and pulse frequency. Appropriate control and optimization of the parameters are critical challenges overcome. It is complicated to properly define the relationships among the numerous inputs and outputs. Predictive techniques like artificial intelligence techniques are being heavily used to control the values of the inputs to get the desired values of the output for the desired applications. The techniques include fuzzy logic modeling, artificial neural networks, and genetic algorithms, among others. The techniques take care of the interactions among the variables and can be used to define complex relationships among the variables with high accuracy. Using the experimental data, predictive models can be developed with artificial intelligence techniques. The models can predict the values of the outputs with high accuracy. Several researchers have shown that the artificial intelligence techniques are effective and efficient in predicting the values of outputs during lesser micromachining. Petal and others used artificial neural networks to study heat-affected zone in fiber laser cutting of glass reinforced plastics. They developed an accurate model that predicts heat-affected zone with over 97% accuracy. Hossein and others used fuzzy logic modeling to investigate calf width in CO2 laser micromachining of polymethyl methacrylate. They produced a model that predicts calf width with relative error of 3.852. Noki and others employed genetic algorithms to study heat-affected zone during the cutting of duralumin with NDYAG lasers. They reduced heat-affected zone at the optimum conditions by 30.01%. In this work, adaptive neurofuzzy inference system was employed to study surface roughness in CO2 laser ablation of polymethyl methacrylate substrates coated with an aluminum layer of purity 99.95%. Fabrication of microchannels on coated polymethyl methacrylate substrates has been shown to produce better results than fabrication on uncoated substrates. In our study, the work material was a transparent PMMA substrate. Minitab 19.1 version was used for designing the experiments using a three-level full factorial design. The inputs were power, speed, and pulse rate, all used at three levels. Accordingly, 27 experiments were conducted. 9 PMMA work samples, each measuring 35 by 25 by 6 millimeters, were cut from a PMMA sheet using the universal laser machine. The machine has a maximum power of 30 watts, maximum speed 250 millimeters per second, and maximum resolution of 1,000 pulses per inch. In this work, volumes of power used were 1.5, 3, and 4.5 watts. Volumes of speed used were 10, 15, and 20 millimeters per second. And the volumes of pulse rate used were 800, 900, and 1000 pulses per inch. The laser's wavelength is 10.6 micrometer. The work samples were thoroughly cleaned using water to remove any dirt that could affect the results. Using sputtering, a 500 nanometer layer of aluminum was then deposited on the work samples in the deposition chambers of the deposition machine in a clean room of class 10,000. The aluminum was 99.95% pure. This is the deposition machine. The deposition of aluminum layer was done in the deposition chambers here. Core and draw software was used for drawing the desired rectangular cross section of microchannels and fabricating the microchannels on the samples using the laser machine. Three microchannels were fabricated on each sample in a single laser pass, totaling to 27 microchannels since there were nine samples. Low power was used because it has been proved to produce good results during fabricating microchannels on polymethyl methacrylate substrates. After the fabrication of the microchannels, the samples were put in ethanol and rigorously cleaned for 20 minutes using an ultrasonic cleaner to get rid of the particles that were stuck on the samples during the fabrication process. An aluminum agent was then used to remove the aluminum coating on the samples. The samples were then characterized using the 3D laser microscope. For every microchannel, average surface roughness was measured at three different points along the microchannel, and the arithmetic mean value was computed to reduce measurement errors. Adaptive fuzzy inference system was then used to analyze the experimental results. Adaptive neural fuzzy inference system combines the principle of both fuzzy logic and artificial neural networks. It can be used to model complex situations and nonlinear relationships among variables. 
Additionally, ANSYS combines linguistic knowledge with numerical knowledge into a single framework. It has a quick learning ability and high adaptation capacity. ANSYS bundles values in fuzzy sets using neural networks. Membership functions are estimated during training of the data to approximate weights. ANSYS follows the fuzzies if-then rules. The rules are used in defining fuzzy logic modeling systems. Stated simply, the rules take the form if A is X, then B is Y. ANSYS can evaluate even nonlinear functions. Also, it is extremely flexible, which permits several variants. It also has a fast learning ability, high generalization capacity, and automatic adaptation capacity. Thus, it can accurately, effectively, and efficiently model surface roughness. In this work, 19 experimental data sets, which is 70% of the total data, were used for training, while 8 data sets, which is 30% of the total data, were used for checking. Using the training data, 19 rules were automatically generated from the trained networks in the ANFIS toolbox rule editor in MATLAB ARA 2022A. The rule viewer helps to examine the inference process for the ANFIS. These are the rules as seen from the rule viewer. When the values of the inputs are adjusted, the subsequent output of a fuzzy rule, the aggregated values of each fuzzy set and the values of the defuzzified outputs can be viewed by identifying the inputs and output of the ANFIS with their subsequent rules and membership functions. The adaptive neural fuzzy inference system was generated by setting the number of membership functions for each input to 3 and selecting the Gaussian membership function type. The training and checking data were then loaded and the adaptive neural fuzzy inference system was then generated. The error tolerance was set to 0 and the training epochs were set to 27, which is the total number of the experimental results. The system was then trained. This is the structure of the trained ANFIS model. These are the inputs, which are three, and these are the membership functions of the inputs. These are the rules, and these are the membership functions of the outputs, and eventually this is the output, which is surface roughness. The ANFIS model was then evaluated using the values of the inputs to get the predicted values of surface roughness. The surface plots were then generated and the prediction errors were calculated. The experimental and predicted results were then compared and analyzed. This figure shows the comparison of the experimental and predicted values of the training data. The red dots represent the experimental values and the blue dots represent the predicted values. As you can see, the blue dots and the red dots are almost overlapping because the experimental values and the predicted values are very close. This figure is a comparison of the experimental and predicted values of the checking data. The red crosses represent the experimental values and the blue crosses represent the predicted values. The values are also very close. The root mean square error was 0.0022 for the training data and 3.6099 for the checking data. These values indicate proper fitting of the data in the developed ANFIS model and good generalization ability of the model. This figure shows the experimental values of surface roughness with the values predicted by the ANFIS model. The black line represents the experimental values and the red line represents the predicted values. As indicated by the figure, the predicted values are very close to the experimental values. This shows the high accuracy of the developed ANFIS model. Single objective optimization of surface roughness was done to minimize surface roughness because surface roughness should be as low as possible. The optimum values of the inputs are power 1.5 watts, speed 20 millimeters per second, and pulse rate 1000 pulses per inch. The optimum value of surface roughness attained at the optimum values of the input is 7.138 micrometer. From the ANFIS model, the predicted value of, of surface roughness at the optimum values of the inputs is 7.1382 micrometer, while the experimental value at the optimum values of the inputs is 7.138 micrometer. The absolute error is 0 0.0002, which is within the root mean square error of the training data, which is 0 0.0022. This validates the optimum conditions. 
Surface roughness indicates irregularities like valleys and peaks on the surfaces of a material. The experimental surface roughness values ranged from 7.138 to 44.267 micrometer. The minimum surface roughness value was attained at the optimum conditions, 1.5 watts, 20 millimeters per second, and 1,000 pulses per inch, while the maximum value of surface roughness was attained at 4.5 watts, 10 millimeters per second, and 800 pulses per inch. This is the main effects plot of surface roughness, showing the effects of power, speed, and pulse rate on surface roughness. These are the surface plots. This one shows the interaction effect of power and speed on surface roughness. This one shows the interaction effect of speed and pulse rate on surface roughness. This one shows the interaction effect of power and pulse rate on surface roughness. The main effects plot and the surface plots all show that surface roughness increases with increase in power but decreases with increase in both speed and pulse rate. Increasing laser power and decreasing scanning speeds and pulse rates lead to increase in heat input, heat intensity per unit area, and heat absorption by the PMMA substrates. Also, the amount of time taken by the laser beam to interact with the PMMA substrates increases. Accordingly, the rates of melting, cooling, and redeposition of the PMMA substrates are high, leading to high thermal damages and hence high surface roughness and poor surface finish on the PMMA substrates. This negatively affect the quality of the microchannels fabricated on the PMMA substrates. On the other hand, low laser power and high scanning speeds and pulse rates lead to low heat input, low heat intensity per unit area, and low heat absorption by the PMMA substrates. Also, the amount of time taken by the laser beam to interact with the PMMA substrates is small. Therefore, the rates of melting, cooling, and redeposition of the PMMA substrates are low. This leads to low thermal damages and hence low surface roughness, leading to better microchannels. High surface roughness leads to high resistance to the flow of fluids inside microchannels. This constrains the flow of fluids. When surface roughness is low, the resistance to the flow of fluids is low, leading to better quality and more accurate results. Low surface roughness is therefore required for microfluidics applications. In conclusion, in this study, the adaptive neurophase inference system was used to model average surface roughness in CO2 laser ablation of aluminum content polymethane methylphenidate, The effects of pulse rate, speed, and power on surface roughness were investigated. From the results of the study, it is clear that ANTHIS is an efficient and effective technique for modeling responses while conducting experiments. The ANTHIS model developed predicts the values of surface roughness with high accuracy. Therefore, it can be used to attain the desired values of surface roughness for the desired applications. Since high power and low speeds produce poor quality results due to the resulting high heat input, high heat intensity per unit area, and high heat absorption by the PMMA substrates, low to intermediate power and medium to high speeds should be used to minimize thermal damages to the work material. The developed ANFIS model can also be used as a yardstick for assessing other optimization models. The study can be used to design phasing controllers for CO2 laser micromachining and regulate the values of the inputs that produce the microchannels with minimum surface roughness as required in microfluidic applications. Future comparative studies can be conducted with the other artificial intelligence techniques like artificial neural networks, genetic algorithms, and hybrid techniques. Different shapes of the microchannels and subset materials can also be considered. The other inputs like air pressure, the number of laser passes, and different aluminum thicknesses, and outputs like heat-affected zone, Microchannel width, microchannel depth, and aspect ratio can also be studied. Different coating materials can also be used. The study can be extended to CO2 laser cutting of other materials like metals, ceramics, and composites, among others. As I stated in the beginning, the international market analysis research and consulting claims that the global microfluidics market size reached about 20.9 billion US dollars in 2021 and is projected to reach 52.4 billion US dollars by 2027 due to the ever-growing demand for microfluidic devices. A multi-billion dollar industry like microfluidics demands consistent research for its potential to be maximized. The question is, are we sufficiently exploring this industry through extensive, creative, and innovative research? Thank you very much.